Good morning. I don't know why I'm extra nervous today, so pastor asked you to pray for me, so keep it going. Um, I'm going to sing a song that I've done a cappella before, but I've never really done it with the music. And uh, Jonathan White got me a couple of tracks that I asked him to get me, and uh, he has better resources than I do, so I'm going to give it a try. It's a little high in spots, so get ready for another Alpha Alpha performance. But hopefully the words will speak to your heart and then the song is related to what I'm going to talk about today. So. There are so many questions people are asking today like what does it take to know God in a personal way does he really love us or does he even care Is there a heaven, and how do we get there from here? Where do we come from? What about freedom from sin? Who is this Jesus, and why is his kingdom within? We could go on forever, on and on down the list. But the only real answer to all of their questions is this. A childlike faith and a trust in Jesus that's all it takes for the Father to receive us a child like faith and a trust in Jesus that's all all it takes for the Father to receive us. And so for all the world's questions, as difficult as they may seem, God gave us the answer. He simply wrote John 3.16 A childlike faith And a trust in Jesus That's all it takes For the Father to receive us a child like faith and a trust in Jesus that's all it takes that's all it takes that's all it takes for the Father to receive us before I get into the sermon today which I'm going to entitle a childlike faith um, I wanted to ask, is there anyone out there that needs a Bible or would like to have a Bible to give to someone? I don't see any hands. Okay. Okay. 
Anyone else? That's a real blessing that we've been able to uh, have those Bibles for anyone that needs them or if you're thinking of someone that you'd like to give one to. So I hope that uh, they bless whoever gets them. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, do my best to get you out of here by 12, so that means i got about 18 minutes. <laughs> i got another one of my basketball players here from when I coached and his family, the Maleys, are back there. It's good to see them and David's probably sitting there thinking, uh-huh. You talked for two and a half hours when we had our banquet with an index card, so I don't believe that. <laughs> well, it seems that uh, there was a preacher who was very long-winded and boring, and he announced to his church on a Sunday that he had, he'd been... Uh, thinking about it and praying about it and that Jesus had uh, led him to believe that he needed to go to another church and he was leaving that week because Jesus had laid it on his heart. The congregation stood up immediately and sang, What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the closing song today. So I might have a little bit of a complex. <clears throat> What is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you're a Christian, you have a lot of hope and faith in what's to come for all of us. If you've asked Christ into your heart. And we have a lot of faith and hope and things that we haven't seen that we believe that's been instilled into us. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, you might think that a lot of what we're talking about here today is just a bunch of malarkey and you probably are hoping I'd shut up here in about five minutes and let you leave. Luke eighteen seventeen says, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not be received, shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. Matthew 18.3 says, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And 18.4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I've touched on this a little bit before in the past, and that is, we're supposed to have that childlike faith as a Christian. And if you're someone that's teeter-tottering, you've never asked Christ into your heart, when the Holy Spirit enters into you, you'll have that childlike faith. You'll be one that believes as a child does when they're growing up with their parents or their grandparents. When you're a young child and your parents and your grandparents tell you things, you believe it wholeheartedly. You don't doubt them. Because you trust them because you love them, and because you know that they wouldn't lie to you. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're supposed to humble ourselves as little children. And if we don't do that, God tells us we're not going to see the kingdom of heaven. You know, God loves us. He loves his children. We're all his children. If you've accepted him as your savior, he loves that you've done that. and He's forgiven you uh, uh, um, from your sins if you've accepted Christ as your Savior. And the little children are all precious in God's eyes. The pastor touched on something this morning in Sunday school about um, what would happen to someone that harms a little child. The verse is about the millstones. 
Children are all precious in God's eyes. And we're, again, we're all God's children. It's his wish that every single child of his will come to know him before they die. Children are precious and they say the darndest things I know. I know there was a one little boy that was in church and he told his mother, I know what God's first name is. She said, God doesn't have a first name. He said, yes, he does. It's Andy. Today in church we sang, Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me, Andy tells me I am his own. The mom just shook her head. Do you have the faith of a little child when it comes to God? Do you have the faith of a little child when it comes to Jesus and him dying on the cross for us? Do you have the faith that the word of God has no error in it and that you believe it from cover to cover? Do you believe in a God? Do you believe in a Jesus that you've never seen before? For some people, that's very hard. But you need to believe it wholeheartedly if you're a Christian and not doubt it. Have you converted your mind and soul and turned it over to Christ? Turn with me, if you will, to John chapter 20. In John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29, this is after Christ has been resurrected and he appears back on earth. He's appeared to most of the disciples, but not Thomas. 24 says, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and trust my hand, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, if you've asked Christ into your heart at some point in your life, We've never seen Christ, we've never seen God, but we believe. We have that inside of us, we don't doubt it. We have that childlike faith. But if you're here today and you've never asked Christ into your heart, you probably doubt it because you've never seen him and it's hard for you to believe in something that you've never seen. It's very hard. It's hard for your mind to go where our minds want to wander when you talk about God and the fact that God created everything and the fact that God was always there. Our minds are not programmed to understand that. Thomas was one of the disciples. Thomas doubted the other disciples that they had seen him after he was resurrected and he had been walking with him. And he doubted the other disciples that they saw him. So if Thomas could doubt that Jesus had been resurrected and had come back and that they had seen him, I can see how it's very easy for any of us to have that faith or doubt, especially at different times in your life when things happen to us and we don't understand why. There's some great examples of faith in the Bible, some great men, some great women. Some of my favorite, and I've talked about them before, Noah, Noah was asked to build an ark. It had never rained before. People were laughing at him. They were involved in just doing things that they wanted to do. They thought he was a fool, a crazy man. And he was building an ark, and he tried to get people to come on the ark. And the only ones that would come was his family. 
but he was a man of faith. He believed that what God had shared with him was going to happen, that the earth was going to flood. It had never happened before. It never had rained before. Only dew that came down in the mornings kept everything watered. And people made fun of him. But he was a man of faith and he stuck to his guns and he stuck to what he believed. He had that childlike faith. Abraham. Abraham, I've talked about that before. I just don't understand how he had such strong faith that he could take the son that he had been wanting for so long that Sarah couldn't have. And they finally had him. And God said, I want you to take this boy and I want you to sacrifice him to me on an altar. And Abraham did that. He took him. He took him to an altar and was ready to sacrifice the son that he had waited for for so long. I could not do that. I could never do that. My faith would waver. But Abraham was able to do that and God spared his son and blessed many nations and many people because of the faith that Abraham had. He had that childlike faith. Turn to Matthew chapter 1. This is another man of faith in my opinion that doesn't often get talked about. But the fact that last week was Father's Day, I thought I wanted to talk about this man. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Joseph isn't always talked about in the same form or fashion as some of these other men in the Bible are as a, of a man of faith, but think about that. Joseph is about to marry a virgin by the name of Mary, and all of a sudden she is with child and Joseph has never been with her. Imagine what ridicule that man faced in those times, or what somebody, if we had to go through that now, would face. Joseph, it says in verse 20, but while he thought on the things, behold, I'm sure Joseph was thinking to himself, what's going on? I don't understand this. I don't know. Do I believe Mary? Do I believe that she's carrying the son of God? And then an angel comes to him in a dream and tells him not to worry about this, that they are about to have the Savior, Jesus Christ. Imagine the faith that he had to have, the childlike faith that Joseph had in those days when Mary had Jesus Christ in her stomach and he knew that was not because of anything he had done. That took some faith. I struggle with faith. I'm sure many of you do too. I don't struggle with my faith when it comes to knowing that Jesus Christ is my heavenly father. I don't struggle with the faith of knowing that Jesus died on the cross so that if I believe in him and accept him as my savior, I'm going to heaven. I don't struggle with that at all. I believe that 100%. I believe this Bible 100%. That's not what I struggle with. I struggle... Sometimes 
when it comes to my faith and turning things over to the Lord. Pastor's wife Diane talked about that a little bit today and it's funny how things just flow together when we have no idea what we're about to talk about. But, you know, I believe John 3.3 3 wholeheartedly that Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is no other way. You have to have asked Christ into your heart at some point in your life. And I believe John 3.16 that was in the song that I sing about. God's only begotten Son, whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Turn to John chapter 14, please. <laughs> Verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <laughs> See, I don't struggle with my faith in that. I know that the Lord's up there making a mansion for me, making a mansion for those believers that know Christ as their Savior. I know that. I don't doubt that at all. Not one bit. And I know that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, that no man can come unto the Father but by Christ. You're not going to get there by being a great person. You're not going to get there by being baptized as a baby. You're only going to get there if you accept Christ as your Savior while you're on this earth. You have to have a spiritual birth while you're here on this earth. That's the only way you're going to get there. But see, I struggle at times to turn it over to God. I say to turn it over to God, whatever it is. Oftentimes there's an it. There's an it that comes up all the time that I have trouble turning it over to God. See, a lot of times I fall back into the humanly flesh part of me and I want to take action in the humanly flesh. If someone wrongs my children, my wife, people I care about, oftentimes it's hard for me to just turn it over to God and believe that God's going to take care of that for me. Or if I'm praying about someone's salvation, Sometimes it's hard for me to just turn it over. I want to jump in there as a human and do something about it. I want to go get in that person's face and tell them, why are you treating my loved one that way? Or punch them in the nose and break their nose and say, you won't do it again because the next time I'll break your nose even harder. That's the human side of me. But that's not God wants, that's not what he wants us to do. He wants us to turn things over to him and believe with that childlike faith that he can do it and he will do it. Matthew chapter 17, and we're about ready to close. <laughs> Verses 14 through 20. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to this disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, he shall say unto his, this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Even 
the disciples that were with Jesus and saw the miracles that he performed and all the great things that he did while they were with him doubted faith, their faith sometimes. They didn't always believe. So I can see how it's easy for us to have that happen to us. But again, God's asking us, he tells us, he wants us to have that childlike faith. He wants us to believe that even if you have the faith, the size of the grain of a mustard seed, that anything is possible, that he can move that mountain, that he can take care of that problem, that he can get that loved one saved. But we have to have the faith as a Christian to turn it over to him. There might not be anybody here today that's getting anything out of this. This might be for me. Because I struggle with this. I struggle with the silly things that come into my life that I don't turn over to God. And the weird thing is, I believe this word for word. And I know Christ is my Savior, and I know I'm going to heaven, and I know what it takes to get there. And I know I fall short of it every day when it comes to sin and the things I say and think and do. I know this too, that in the next few months, in the next few years, if Christ doesn't come back and rapture us out of here, it's going to be even harder for us to keep the faith. Just look at what's going on around us with our politics and what's accepted in the world today. We are going to continue to become a minority if you believe in Jesus Christ and you're going to be continued to be laughed at and mocked at like some of the examples I talked about today. We've got to have faith. We've got to have a childlike faith. I need you to pray for me that I'll be able to turn things over to God and give it to him and not want to go punch somebody's lights out because they wronged somebody I care about. I've always been one that stuck up for the underdog my whole life. I remember being a fifth grader and having a kid in my grade that was a foot and a half taller than me and he was a bully and he picked on everybody. And I would always stand up to him. And he picked me up one time and threw me up on the top of the lockers and I slid down to the floor. And I told him, quit picking on people. That doesn't bug me at all. You didn't hurt me. You're not going to hurt me. Leave people alone. And when he left the school that year, he left before the end of the year, he came up to me and said, thank you. And I said, for what? What are you thanking me for? You want to beat me up. You don't like me. He said, I want to thank you. You're the only person that's ever stood up to me. And he said, thank you for being a friend. We need to keep each other in prayer because it's going to get difficult. And it's going to get difficult real quick. I can tell you that. I'm in the public sector as a superintendent. You know what I'm dealing with. You know what's coming my way. you got to keep me in prayer. you got to keep our families in prayer. And we have to stand up for what's right. Don't lay down to what's about to hit us. Because it's going to hit us like a tsunami if you were sitting on the beach. There's not one person running for president that I want to vote for. I can tell you that. Somebody like a Mike Huckabee that I think would have been a good president would have got in there and he would have not been afraid to talk about God and prayed about God. He doesn't have a chance the way our society is today. The two people that are running don't like either one of them. But you know what? I've got to have that childlike faith to say it's in God's hands. And he's going to take care of us. And we're just here for a short time. If you know Christ is your Savior, it's just a short time and then you're going to be in heaven for eternity. And this is the only hell we'll ever know.
before pastor comes, I just want everybody to just bow their heads. And I want you to think about there's something that you just had a hard time turning over to God. And right now, I want all of us to just take a moment of silence here and let's turn that over to God. And let's have a childlike faith that he's going to take care of it. Amen. Pastor.